Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will discuss about classification of systems. This video is very essential for university examination as well as for competitive examination. Here, I will discuss about classification of system in different ways. System can be classified as per linear and non-linear system. System can be classified as per a time variant and time invariant system. System can be classified as per linear time invariant and linear time variant system. System can also be classified as per static and dynamic system. System can be classified as per causal and non-causal system. System can also be classified as per invertible and non-invertible system. And one can classify system as per stable and unstable system. So here I will discuss about all these categories of classification in great detail. First of all, I will discuss about classification by linearity of the system. One should know as if system follows superposition theorem, then one can say given system is linear system. So linearity of the system can be identified by using superposition theorem. Let me explain that by one example. For example, here we have a system. And to this system, if you give input x1 of t, and let us consider it is producing output that is y1 of t. And to that same system, if you give input x2 of t, then if it is producing output y2 of t, and after this output, if you multiply constant a1 and a2 to y1 t and y2 t, then here we have a1 y1 t, and here we have a2 y2 t. And as if you add these two, then the resultant output that is yt, that is a1 y1 t plus a2 y2 t. Now to check linearity, we need to provide second combination. Here we have signal x1 t and x2 t. And to this signals, I am multiplying constant a1 and a2. And after that, I am adding both of the signals. So now my signal is a1x1t plus a2x2t and as if given system produces output yt that is a1y1t plus a2y2t which is similar to output over here then one can say this given system follows superposition theorem and given system is linear system. So linearity can be identified using superposition theorem. And as if superposition theorem is followed, then one can say given system is linear system. So this is the process that we need to follow to identify linearity of the system, right? Now I will discuss about second classification that is based on time invariant and time variant system. See a system is said to be time invariant system if a time shift in the input signal results in a corresponding time shift in a output. So as if you provide time shift at input side, at that time at output side also there has to have time shift. Let me explain that by one example. Like here, if you observe we have system and to this system, let us give input that is x of t. And with respect to input, let us consider it is producing output y of t. And after that, if we give delay t naught, then my output should be y of t minus t naught, right? Now, here to second combination, if I give input, where initially I'm providing delay to input. So now my signal over here, that is t minus t naught with x. And if I give this input to system, then it should produce output, which is y of t minus t naught. And as if both of the signals are same, then one can say given system is time invariant system, right? So a system is said to be time invariant as if time shift in input signal results into corresponding time shift into output, right? Now I will discuss about classification with respect to linear time invariant and linear time variant system. See linear time invariant means LTI system and as if system follows linearity as per superposition theorem 
and it is following time invariant as per this condition then one can say given system is LTI system. If system is linear and time invariant then given system is linear time invariant system right. Now I will discuss about next classification that is based on static and dynamic system. See static systems are memoryless systems. Static systems are memoryless system means here output is depending on present input only. So static systems are memoryless system where output of static system depends only on present input right. When you talk about dynamic systems then dynamic system has memory within it and because of which you will be observing output of dynamic system depends on present past and future inputs. So as if output depends on present past and future inputs then one can say given system is dynamic system and always remember dynamic systems are memory system where there is memory associated with system right. Now I will discuss about classification as per causal and non-causal system. See a system is causal if its output depends only on present and past input values. So as if output depends on present and past input values and it is not depending on future inputs then one can say given system is causal system. So for causal system always remember output depends on present and past inputs. Output is not depending on future inputs while non-causal system that is depending on future inputs right. Now I will discuss about invertible and non-invertible system. See what is the meaning of invertible? Invertible means here you should be able to reconstruct input from the output. So from the output if we can recover input signal then one can say given system is invertible system right. So here as if our system can recover input signal from the output then one can say given system is invertible system right. If you have equalizer then using equalizer we can recover our signal from distorted signal. For example if you have one signal that you pass through channel like we can have wireless channel or wired channel. So after passing through channel there will be distortion in given signal and if you use equalizer then using equalizer we can reconstruct original signal that is our input signal. So invertible system can reconstruct input signal from output right. Now I will discuss about stability of the system. Here stability is very essential. I will explain multiple meanings of stability. First of all one should know stability means if system produces bounded output with respect to bounded input then given system is stable system. So as if system follows BIBO means bounded input to bounded output then given system is stable system right. So if system produces BIBO means bounded input to bounded output then given system is said to be stable system. Usually we identify stability of the system from the transfer function. So transfer function that usually we represent in Laplace domain and from the transfer function we can identify stability. Like transfer function will be having numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial numerator roots that gives you idea about zeros, denominator roots that gives you idea about poles and as if any single pole that is there in RHP then one can say given system is unstable. So based on transfer function we can identify stability where by location of poles we can identify stability as if any pole is there in RHP then one can say system is unstable. 
First of all, let me explain how BIBO is there with the system. BIBO means bounded input to bounded output. So here we have one system. Here input is R of T and output is C of T. Let us give one input that is unit step input you can observe. Now let me consider multiple output cases. So here if I say my output that is appearing like this which is sinusoidal waveform then here output is bounded in this range means we have bounded output. See input is bounded here input is having finite value. So input is bounded output is also bounded means this is an example of stable system as if you have another output in which output is appearing like a ramp signal then with respect to time this output will increase right it is unbounded so this is a classic example of unstable system but still i need to explain you multiple meaning as i have told you so let me explain second stability criteria and this is regarding asymptotically stable system let me explain that graphically first so here asymptotically stable system that is based on output tends towards zero in absence of input let me explain that by graph that will gives you more clarity see here we have one input signal you can observe that is pulse signal right so here input is having some value and after some time it is zero right now with respect to input let us consider output is happening like this where if you observe once input is zero output is going towards zero right once input is not there once input is zero then what is happening output is going towards zero means given system is asymptotically stable system right it is bounded input bounded output but after input is zero output is going towards zero means given system is asymptotically stable system now let me explain how one can identify stability from the transfer function so in third stability criteria we try to analyze transfer function on s plane so one should know transfer function that we represent on s plane on s plane with vertical axis we have imaginary component and on horizontal axis we have real component and transfer function is a ratio of output to input like you can observe here we have a transfer function of one system let us consider that is a ratio of output by input that is numerator polynomial divided by denominator polynomial roots of numerator polynomial explains you zeros and roots of denominator polynomial that explains you poles right so here this n of s that explains you zeros and this d of s that explains you poles as if any single pole is there in this right half plane then given system becomes unstable so as if roots of denominator polynomial that explains you poles and as if all the poles are there in left half plane then given system is stable so as if poles are having negative real values then that will be there in left half plane means that will be having stable system as if any pole is there in right of plane means pole is having positive real value then system becomes unstable and as if poles are there on imaginary axis then system becomes marginally stable system right so based on the location of poles one can identify stability based on input output waveforms one can identify stability i hope you have enjoyed this session now based on this session in next coming videos i will solve examples that will gives you more resolution about how one can solve problems based on classification of systems thank you so much for watching this video